Hello, and welcome to my presentation on the narration essay, also called the personal experience essay. What is narration? A narration essay tells a story that explains what happened, when it happened, and who was involved. Basically, a narration focuses on one event in your life, and you give great detail on what happened. The narration should have a clear point. It should reveal what you want the reader to learn or take away from the story. You're not just telling a story from your life just to tell it. It is not a diary or a journal entry. It is a focused, organized essay about one particular event in your life that affected you in some way that your audience or your reader might be able to relate to. Let's take a look at an example of some narration paragraphs. You might want to pause the video here to read these two paragraphs and you decide which one is a narration. Okay, let's read number one. Last summer, I took my twin daughters, Marie and Marissa, to the Science Museum for their birthday party. We had a wonderful time. While they visited the exhibits on space travel, I visited the sections on computer technology. Before we left, we bought souvenirs in the gift shop. Second paragraph. To get the best fishing spot in Lake Harrison, start your motor and go due east for four miles until you come to Cabot's Cove. Quietly row to the inlet without disturbing the fish. So, which one is the narration paragraph? That's right, hopefully you chose number one. Right in the beginning, at the first sentence, you know what they're getting ready to talk about. It was a summer trip to a science museum. Why were they going to the museum for a birthday party? Just in those few sentences, you get a brief sense of who, what, when, why, where. Let's talk about topics for narration. You might be given a list of topics to choose from. However, if you have to come up with a narration topic of your own, then focus on an experience in your life that really taught you something or that really impacted you in a way that you want to share that story or you wouldn't mind sharing that story with other people. Let's say, for example, something really inspirational happened to you and the outcome was really positive. Or let's say you had a difficult experience, but what you learned really helped you to overcome or to gain victory over whatever the circumstance was. So you want to focus on something that was momentous in your life that you can describe in enough detail to get at least two pages of an essay. All right. So which topic is about narration? How do you frost a birthday cake? What is your fondest memory? Who is the most attractive movie star? Have you ever visited a foreign country? Which one of these topics would work for a narration essay or a personal experience essay? Definitely, what is your fondest memory? Have you ever visited a foreign country? Let's say, for example, well, in my experience, I went to Spain uh, as a college student for about six weeks. One thing that happened to me that I will never forget is the heat and the sun were very high. I needed sunblock for my skin. I accidentally bought suntan lotion and I had to explain to the lady in Spanish because she spoke no English why I needed to exchange the suntan lotion for the sun block. And I was there with a few other of my peers. She would not give my money back. She would not exchange. So I finally said, I am already black. Ya estoy morena. And she immediately <laughs> gave my money back. So that was a very memorable experience for me. What did I learn? how to speak really well in Spanish in a clutch. <laughs> All right, so something like that. You still need a thesis statement. Remember, your narration is an essay. It needs to have an introduction, a thesis, a body, and a conclusion. So instead of using a direct or three-point thesis statement, narrations often use implied thesis statements. Here is an example of a direct three-point thesis. 
On our summer vacation to Hot Springs, Arkansas, we strolled down Bathhouse Row, visited the Gangster Museum, and caught a concert at Magic Springs. In this thesis statement, we know exactly what elements of your summer vacation you are getting ready to talk about. You went to Bathhouse Row. You're going to talk about that. Next, you went to the Gangster Museum. That comes second. Then you a caught a concert at Magic Springs. So we already know the organization of your narration, right? In the second kind of thesis statement, it is an implied thesis where it is suggested. It is not direct at all. For example, when I had trouble with my finances, help came from an unexpected source. Not only is that an implied thesis, but that is also a hook because now I want to know more. Well, what happened? You know, what was the trouble with your finances? What kind of help that you did you get? So a hook catches the reader's attention and makes us want to hear more. We want to read your story to see what happened. And that is what a hook is. It gives a little bit of suspense and it's a lead in so that we are grabbed at the beginning and we want to continue to the end of your story. Narrative order. Your narration essay or stories are told in chronological order from beginning to end. Chronological order is also called time order or time sequence. Remember, stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. As a beginning writer, use a straightforward organizational structure. Do not use flashbacks. This is not a creative writing class. You are writing an essay about an experience in your personal life. Let's practice a little bit on chronological order. You might want to pause the video here and read these statements on your own. What you need to do is read the topic sentence and then put one, two, three, four in the blank of the sentence you think should come first, the sentence that comes second, third, and fourth. Okay, a combination of talent and hard work has propelled Alicia Keys to musical stardom. So now look at the sentences. Some have dates of years in them. Some have ages mentioned. Those are clues to time or time clues to help you put these four sentences in order as if you are writing a paragraph about Alicia Keys. All right, so here are the answers. Did you get all of them correct? Number one, that's the earliest date. In 1988, seven years old, you have two time clues there. So of course, that's going to be the first sentence in the paragraph right after the topic sentence. The next one, number two, as a teenager. So we have moved from seven-year-old to teenager, right? That's time order. The third one mentions at age 20, you've gone from seven to teenager to age 20. We know that teenager is somewhere between 13 and 19. This statement did not have to say when she was 19 years old, all right? It simply says a teenager. Teenager is still a time clue word. And then statement number four, 2005. Now that is the latest year that you see in these statements. So of course that is going to be the last one. So we have moved from seven year old in 1988 all the way down to 2005 where she is over 20 years old. In fact, she's 23. So make sure that you tell your narration in a clear chronological sequence from beginning to end. Transitional words move you from one paragraph to the next, or it moves you from one part of your story to the next part of your story. Since narration essays rely on chronological order or time sequence, words and phrases that signal time are helpful to the reader to keep us clear on the order of your experience. Okay, let's take a look. Examples of transition words that you will use in a narration essay. Afterward, after that, currently, eventually, finally, first, later, meanwhile, next, now, soon, then, or you can use dates of the year as we saw in a previous example in the Alicia Keys paragraph. But use transitional words so that we are clear that you are moving to another part of your story and that you are wrapping it up. 
So here are some tips on writing your narration essay. Number one, remember a narration essay is not a short story. It is not a journal or a diary entry. It is still an essay that requires an introduction, a thesis, a body, and a conclusion. Remember, your narration essay needs to have a point. Why are you sharing this story? What can readers learn from your experience? Make the point of the story known in the conclusion of the essay. You don't have to write the moral of the story is, or what I really learned was, you know, some of you are very creative writers and you are more insightful than that. So I'm sure we can expect a better round off to your story than something like that. But make it clear that we've come to the end of the situation and that your point is made clear to the reader as well. Three, make sure all events are told in a clear sequence of events, which is characteristic of good chronological order. Imagine someone trying to tell you about a movie or trying to tell you about what happened to them last night. And they keep saying, oh, but before that, oh, I forgot to tell you this. And then what happened was, but oh, I forgot to tell you that. All right, they're all over the place. That is so frustrating because you cannot get a clear sense of what happened because they jump here, they forgot that, and then they got to tell you this and go back there. Okay, so imagine you writing an essay like that. That's very frustrating to read for your instructor and for your peers who might be reviewing your work. Number four, write out or outline the events of your story before beginning to write. So you have one situation, all right, that time in Spain where the lady didn't want to give me my money back for suntan lotion. I could do a beginning, an intro, a middle, an end, but I need to write out or draft out exactly what I'm going to talk about when I'm telling that experience. That helps me to stay focused and it helps my writing to stay focused. Use descriptions, examples, and rich colorful language to make your story vivid for the reader. Use your senses, sights, smells, colors, all of that so that we get a sense or a better understanding of your situation and what was happening. All right, before we end off, let's take a look at a narration paragraph from a professional writer. My first public poetry reading took place at a restaurant where a luncheon was being held before the event. I was nervous and excited as I walked in with a notebook in hand. An older woman motioned me to her table and thinking, foolish me, that she wanted me to autograph a copy of my newly published slender volume of verse, I went over. She ordered a cup of coffee from me, assuming that I was the waitress. Easy enough to mistake my poems for menus, I suppose. I know it wasn't an intentional act of cruelty, yet of all the good things that happened later, I remember that scene most clearly because it reminded me of what I had to overcome before anyone would take me seriously. This is from the Latina stereotype by Judith Ortiz Kofer. Now look, from the very beginning of the sentence, or from the very first sentence, we know she's talking about a public poetry event. We have a sense of what happened in the middle of that paragraph. And at the end, what she got from it. It reminded her of what she would have to overcome before anybody would take her seriously. So this is a condensed example of what you will do in a full narration essay. All right, so if you need more help with your writing skills, go to easyedits.net, which will link you to some free YouTube video tutorials of how to write different kinds of essays and how to improve your grammar. Okay, thank you very much for watching and happy learning.